The first thing you need to understand is getting in front of people is easy. And I'm going to show you how we do that in a moment. The challenge that we all have is when we're in front of someone, what do we say that is interesting to them? Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Agency Hour podcast live here in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. There's lots to share today. There's lots of developments. There's lots going on here at Hullabaloo House, which is headquarters for Agency Mavericks. That is the name of the new uh, studio that we've moved into. Well, that's the name that we've given it. Um, If you are joining in this live stream, in our Facebook group, the Digital Mavericks Facebook group, please say hi in the comments so that I know that it's all working and that you can see me and that you can hear my lovely aging voice and you can see my lovely aging face. Let me know in the comments. Just tell me what country you're from so I can get uh, an affirmative that it's all working. And if you're listening to this on your AirPods, or your podcatcher, or wherever you listen to, or maybe a thousand watt PA system in your lounge room, however you listen to your podcasts, then you should really come and join the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Because occasionally we do things like share our screens and we show you some of the processes that we have set up for helping agencies grow. Craig Grant says, Hi, Troy, can hear you loud and clear. Excellent. Thank you, Craig. Where are you, Craig, in the world? Are you in Australia? Are you in the United States of America? Are you in the United Kingdom? Where in the world are you? And that also what happens in the group, if you're watching this occasionally, Max pulls up a, a little bumper uh, and shows it on the screen, a little animated segment header like he just did then. Jen McGrory is here from Connecticut. Craig is in the UK. Thank you very much. So if you're listening to this, come and join the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Just go to facebook.com. Search for Digital Mavericks and join the group. Answer a few questions. Promise not to be a dick and we will let you in to the group and you can join in the conversation. Today, I'm going to I'm going to share my screen today and I'm going to walk you through how to get leads for your agency in the next 24 hours. In fact, if you follow the bouncing ball, you can get leads within the next three to four hours depending on what's going on Uh, at Facebook at the time, because yes, we are going to be using some Facebook lead ads. I'm going to show you how to get leads uh, super quick, typically within, you know, three to four hours. And I'm going to talk about why this is important. And I'm going to talk about when to use this strategy. Okay. And I'm going to show you the results of of a couple of campaigns that I've been running And I'm going to do a deep dive and show you why I think they're working. But before we get there, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the studio here because you might notice on my desk, James Murgatroyd, there are two drinking vessels. There is a mug of coffee and a glass of water. But also next to me here is an Elgato key light. Now, these things I've been using for, I don't know, the last three or four years to light myself when I make videos. And the beautiful thing about these, if you've never used one, is these things here strap on to the desk. And so I've got a sit down, stand up desk. Don't worry, we're going to do a full studio tour soon and give you the behind the scenes. But the reason this is sitting on my desk is because I'm not using it anymore. And I want to tell you why. These things are strapped to your desk And because my desk is a sit-stand desk, it goes up and down. And they throw off a beautiful light. They're very powerful. However, what I've realized is we're in quite a big studio. We have very high ceilings and we have lots of space here in the studio. And these things are sitting quite close to me because they're strapped to the desk. And I just wasn't loving the harshness of the light that they were throwing onto my pretty little head. So we have invested in a new a few new lights. Um, and what I'm using now as my main light is a Aperture Amaran 100X. I'm going to turn it off so you can see the difference. Now, I've still got a couple of Elgato key lights. I've got one to my right here to fill in the shadows, and I've got one above me 
to light my beautiful hair and the top of my shoulders. I'm just going to turn them off so that you can see the difference. Now, again, if you're listening to this as a podcast, this is going to make for fascinating radio. So you should definitely come and join the group. I'm going to turn the my hair light off. Ooh, there we go. So the top of my head disappears into the background. And I'm going to turn my fill light off, which is over here to the right. There we go. The side of my face disappears. So the only light on now is the Aperture Amaran 100X. I'm going to turn that off and I will disappear into the darkness altogether. The good thing I, I like about these Aperture Amaran lights is that you can control them with an app called Citus Link. So I don't need to get up there on a ladder and turn them on and off and all that kind of palaver. I can just sit here and turn it off like this. <gasps> and now we're in the darkness, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing I've got on now is my Philips Hue light sitting behind me on the set. So I'm going to turn my Aperture Amaran light on. There we go. That's running at about 18%. It is super powerful. In fact, let me just turn it up to a quarter. Oh, and a half. Ah. Getting bright now. And full. Ah. That's just way too bright. So I run this at about 18%. And then what I do is, uh, because now there are some shadows on the other side of my face, that's where I use the Elgato key lights to counteract the shallow and a hair light to light the top of my head. I am full transparency, going to replace these Elgato key lights with more Amarans, which are on the way. Uh, because I don't like the harshness of these Elgato lights. And what I've realized is that the Elgato key lights are great for YouTubers and gamers who are basically operating out of their bedroom in a very small space. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> hair light is a tad bright, says James Murgatroyd. Really? Really? Well, I'll just turn it down a little bit. There we go. So, having got that out of the way, that's why there's a key light sitting on my desk. Let's dive in and figure out how to get some leads for our business, shall we? Now, the number one conversation and the number one question that we have from people coming into our world is, I need clients, right? I need uh, leads and I need clients. Now, what I know to be true is that getting leads is like shooting fish in a barrel. It's very easy to do. What I also know is that most people don't know what to do with a lead when they get them. So here's the thing, right? That's right, Sheila. You should have just asked me. Sheila says, I spent months watching YouTube videos to get my studio lighting right. Apparently, I just needed to follow Digital Mavericks. Well, you should have just pinged me on Voxer because you're in Mavericks Club. You should have just asked me and I would have told you. Uh, anyway, um, so the here's what I here's what I suspect. I suspect that most people know that getting leads is actually quite straightforward. The reason they don't do it is because they don't know what to do with the lead once they get them, right? Which I'll talk about in a moment. And so therefore they make all these excuses about how hard it is to get leads. And they don't take enough action. They get scared. They don't run any ads. They don't put up any freebies to give away. They don't do anything. They don't leave the building. They, go, they don't go to networking events. They don't comment on other people's Facebook groups. They don't do anything to try and generate leads because they don't know what to do with the leads. So in today's episode, I'm going to completely demystify lead gen once and for all, because lead gen, uh, with the world that we live in and the fact that every computer and smartphone in the world is connected, just wrap your head around that for a second, right? When I grew up, kids, first of all, there was no mobile phones. Back in the day, when I had to walk 300 kilometres just to get water, uh, <clears throat> and there were no telephones. We were the first house in our street with a telephone. We used to have the neighbours walk in the back door, because the back door wasn't shut or locked in those days, You'd, I'd be in the lounge room and you'd hear, yoo-hoo, one of the neighbours would be walking in the back door. Anybody home? Mum would say, yes, come in. I saw, how are you going, darling? And they'd have a bit of a catch-up and then invariably the conversation would lead to, can I borrow your phone? Because we were the only ones in the house with a telephone. So this is how old I am, right? And back then, lead gen was really bloody hard. I had to get in the car. This is what I used to do for a living. I had to get in the car, Right? And I used to drive around knocking on hairdressers' front doors and walking into salons while they're perming 
and putting foils in some lady's hair and I would literally interrupt them. Hello, my name's Troy. I'm here to sell you some shampoo. Have you got a minute? And they'd be like, well, clearly not. I'm in the middle of something, you idiot. Can you go away and don't come back? That's what lead gen looked like when I started out. Now, right, <clears throat> every telephone and computer in the world is connected. Just wrap your little head around that for a second. Every, there are more smartphones in the world than people. Figure that out. More smartphones than people. What the fuck? Why do we need more smartphones than there are people? Oscar and Goldie do not have a smartphone. So there's two straight off. We should have two more people than smartphones. But we don't. We have more smartphones than people, right? And more smartphones than computers, okay? And they're all connected via the internet that is very tightly controlled by three fascist oligarchs in America. <clears throat> I'm kidding. Uh, so you have access to everyone on the planet, and I'm going to prove now how easy it is to get them to put up their hand and express interest in what it is you're doing. So for the sake of this exercise, we are going to pretend that I am an agency and that I build websites and do SEO and lead gen for lawyers. Dun, dun, dun. We need like a, a sound effect like Dragnet, Max. Dun, dun, dun. And so, so here's the thing, because the first thing you need to understand is getting in front of people is easy. And I'm going to show you how we do that in a moment. The challenge that we all have is when we're in front of someone, what do we say that is interesting to them? And let me give you a hint. There is not one lawyer on the planet right now who is in some kind of mental anguish because they know they need to fix their website. That person does not exist. Okay? So if you find yourself in front of a lawyer and you have an opportunity to speak with them, I would suggest that you do not start the conversation by telling them that you can help them with their website and their SEO because they will probably fall asleep or they'll probably just walk off in the opposite direction and completely ignore you because they are busy. So let's just go and visit Facebook for a moment. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share a post that I put up a little while ago on my own personal Facebook profile for no reason whatsoever other than I'm an idiot and I wanted to share something that was working and I had no strategic reason for doing this whatsoever. I did not expect anything to come from it at all. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen here. And uh, here it is. Here is the post. I took a photo in my office, which is, uh, which is just the other side of where I'm sitting at the moment, the other side of the, uh, the petition, the, the glass wall. Uh, in my office, I was having a bit of uh, an issue not making eye contact with people on Zoom, right? And I learned this from uh, my man, uh, Ian Salisbury. I think his name's Ian. What's, he, what's Mr. Salisbury's first name? Is it Alan or Ian Salisbury? Can't remember. Anyway, uh, he's in the Ecamm live um, Facebook group and he shares a lot of information about live streaming. And one of the things that he shared was how to do eye contact on Zoom. So I went down that rabbit hole and learned from one of his free videos and I set up a little teleprompter in front of my camera strapped to my desk with one of those beautiful Elgato lights that I was just telling you about, right, so that people can see me. And on that teleprompter, I put my iPad <clears throat> and then I plugged it into my computer and I use a little app called Duet Air to flip the iPad image around so that when I see it in the teleprompter, everyone's looking the right way. I can also use this for doing presentations and making sales videos because I can use the iPad as, a, as an actual teleprompter and I can read a script, right? But in this instance, I'm just using it so that I can make eye contact with people on Zoom, okay? And uh, look at this, 57 comments, 
including Jeremy Kapow, great last name. What a fantastic last name. He should be in Batman. Jeremy Kapow said, you are a genius. Well, maybe. I'm not sure uh, about that. But let's go and have a look at some of these comments. All right, look at this. David Vogelpohl from WP Engine left a comment. Matt Jones, one of our Mavericks Club members. Pete Buey, haven't, haven't spoken to Pete for a long time. Paul Holland asked a question. Noah Britton piped up. Lots of quest- lots of comments here, right? Sherry Walling, one of my favourite humans. Ian Anderson Gray, one of my favourite live streamers. There we go. Chimed in. Dave Foy, right? Look at this. 57 comments, right? Crazy. Now, what happened as a result of that is I had someone reach out to me in Messenger and they said, hey, you know, there's a business in setting this up, that, that eye contact Zoom teleprompter thing. There's a business in setting that up for people. And I said, yes, I know there is. It's not the business I'm going to go into though because the idea of coming to your office and uh, setting this up for you, you couldn't pay me enough, brother. So it's a good idea, but I'm not going to do it. So feel free to do it. And he said, I'm a lawyer. And I said, I know. And uh, I said, out of interest, how much would you pay someone to do that? And he said, oh, probably $1,000 plus whatever the parts are that I need. Now, in order to do this properly, properly, and, and I'll come back to the lawyer in a second. In order to do this properly, I don't think you can use a little Logitech webcam, right? I think you need a half-decent digital SLR camera with a half-decent lens. And the kit that I recommend is the Sony A6400 mirrorless camera with a Sigma 16mm lens for, for in the office there. It's a beautiful kit. It's going to set you back, I don't know, probably somewhere between two and three grand, depending on what day of the week you buy it on and where you buy it from. The teleprompter is a couple of hundred bucks, right? And then an iPad. So, you know, whatever. It's going to maybe cost you four, three and a half, four grand for a lawyer, who cares? And then someone to set it up, right? Now, the reason the lawyer wanted to do this is not just for client meetings. Think about it. Why do you, when you're using a lawyer, you are, typically speaking, you have a lot to lose or a lot to gain. Lawyers win or lose and it can change people's lives. It can put people in jail. It can send them broke. It can end in them not getting custody of their children. Lawyers are dealing with, with very, in very high stake situations. And without a setup like this, they're going to be looking down at their computer when they're on client calls. And they'll be saying, oh, yes, John, I understand. It's a very terrible situation. Um, but, you know, bigamy is not legal in Australia and you do have five wives. And so that's why they're divorcing you and you're probably going to run out of money and go broke because you're an idiot. It's not very good if they're looking at the computer doing that. They want to be able to look at John and tell him in the face that he's an idiot and that bigamy is illegal, right? And not only for client meetings, but when they're in court, they zoom into court. Zooms become a verb, just like Google and Hoover. They zoom into court and they don't want to be looking down at the screen saying, yes, Your Honour, I know that bigamy is illegal, but I really think you should have some, you know, sympathy for my poor messed up client who's married five wives. They want to look at the judge. And the way to do that is to have this set up with the teleprompter and, you know, so this is why the lawyer is saying to me, this is important. Okay. Now, if, (laughs) thanks for playing along. If, uh, if I was a web designer and an SEO guy or a digital marketing guy, and I was still looking for clients and my clients that I was looking for were lawyers then this guy's just given me a massive gift in Messenger by telling me that he would pay money to have this problem solved, right? So last week I was on a call with our Sales Accelerator clients. Now, Sales Accelerator is a program that we run. This is not a pitch, by the way, but I just want to give you some context as to what the hell Sales Accelerator is and what it's got to do with what I'm talking about. Sales Accelerator is a program that we run it's a three-month guided coaching program where people get to hang out with me and Pete Crispy Butter Perry every week and we help them fix their sales process. It's the number one reason people don't do lead gen is because they don't have a sales process. And last week on the call, 
we had a bunch of people in Sales Accelerator saying, well, we're pretty confident now and blah, blah, blah. We've got the sales process set up and we want to book more calls. How do we book more calls? And I said, right, I'm going to show you how to book leads fast. So I opened up Facebook ads, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And I started a campaign and I had no idea what was going to happen. Right. <clears throat> and I was winging it. It was on the fly. I said, okay, let's pretend that I'm going after lawyers. So instead of running a Facebook campaign about me and what I do, let's run a Facebook campaign that I think might appeal to the lawyers. So this is, remember before when I said that I'm going to explain when to use this strategy? Well, here it is. This is one time when Facebook ads is really, really helpful. And it is to do what I call verify a hypothesis. I had an idea that I could talk to lawyers about making eye contact on Zoom as a way of starting a conversation. And the reason that I had that idea is because this lawyer pinged me in Messenger and told me that he would pay money to have this problem solved. That's a pretty big buying signal there, ladies and gentlemen. That's a pretty big indication that he has a need that he is willing to pay money to solve, right? Now, full transparency. What I'm going to do at some point, Max and I are going to make a video, a series of videos here in the new studio. Show, you know those YouTube style videos that go into great painstaking detail and show the guy under the desk ringing the thing up and plugging the cable in? We're going to make some videos like that, showing people how to set up this eye contact on Zoom set up with the teleprompter. And we're going to publish that for free and all of the products in that are going to be linked off to my kit.co page, which is full of my Amazon affiliate links. And I'm going to share that publicly with everyone I know who wants to make eye contact on Zoom and they'll go and buy all the shit from Amazon and I'll make a little bit of money that way, right? So that's what I'm going to do ultimately with this because I don't want lawyers, because I don't build websites anymore and I don't run campaigns for lawyers anymore, right? But if you did, follow along because I think there's something to learn here. So what I did <clears throat> is I'm now going to use Facebook lead ads to validate whether or not this idea has legs. Can I start a conversation with a lawyer about eye contact on Zoom? And can I continue that? First of all, can I generate any interest whatsoever? And then if I do, can I continue that conversation and form a relationship, be super helpful, and then pivot the conversation to something like, hey, by the way, your website's a pile of shit and definitely needs some work. I might know someone who can help you but I'm not going to start the conversation with that. I'm going to start the conversation by being super helpful and helping them make eye contact on Zoom. If I come over to Facebook and I go to my page here, you'll see now, where are we? Do, do, do. Oh dear. Uh, I'm just going to search Troy Dean and I'll find my page. Here we go. And I'll come to my page. I'm an entrepreneur apparently. Uh, one, 1,300 people like it. If I go to my page now, you'll see here in the sidebar, I have my leads center, okay? Just make sure you guys can see that. Yes, you can. This is where you would access your leads. If you have the lead center in your Facebook account, you may not. And if you don't, then you should call Facebook on the phone and request it and see how far that gets you. As I said, otherwise, you can actually download your leads within the ads manager, which is a pain in the ass. But anyway, that's a whole other conversation. So, what I wanted to do was I wanted to find out <clears throat> if people were interested in uh, this piece of content. So what I did is I started this campaign called Lawyer Eye Contact. And then within the campaign, <clears throat> I set up an ad set. The first ad set I set up was this one for the US. And all I did was targeted, I'm not going to bore you with all the painstaking details now, but all I did was targeted uh Human beings aged between 35 and 60, male and female, that was it. That's my interest targeting. And then I spent $10 a day on that ad set. I'll tell you how I got all these other ad sets in a moment. And then I set up an ad. 
Now, my ad is a lead generation ad on Facebook. And what that means is that Facebook collects the name and email address directly within Facebook. There is no need to set up a landing page. There is no need to set up any pixels. There is no need to go into ClickFunnels or WordPress and do anything. All I'm doing is collecting a name and an email address directly within Facebook, which is probably why these leads are so cheap because they're not leaving the Facebook platform. I suspect when I start driving traffic off Facebook to my own page, which I will, not for lawyers, but for another example I'll show you in a moment, I suspect that the leads will get more expensive because I'm sending people off Facebook, but that's okay. I think I've validated the idea and it's worth pursuing. So in the, let me show you the ad, okay? So I made this ad, one ad set, and I called the ad set US because I'm just targeting the US. And I made an ad called Eye Contact. And here's the ad. The ad says this. Now, remember, my interest targeting is very, very broad. I'm targeting all people between the age of 35 and 60 or 30 and 60, I think, in the US. I don't care who they are. And I'm letting my copy call them out. So I'm using what's called dog whistle copy because the first line of my copy says, attention lawyers. Now, if I was smart in the US, I would probably say attention attorneys because that's what they call them. But I'm an idiot. So I didn't do that. Attention lawyers. If you want to make eye contact with people on Zoom, read this. It's genius, isn't it? Attention lawyers, make eye contact on Zoom is the headline. And it's a lead generation ad, which means Facebook then asked me to plug it into one of my existing lead forms or create a new form. Now, I'm not going to walk you through exactly how to create a form because that would be boring for you. However, uh, all I did was I created the form right? I put the picture up in the form of the post that I did on Facebook showing the teleprompter and the Zoom, right? Which that, by the way, that photo was taken with my iPhone accidentally during a team meeting. I went, hey, that's pretty cool. I'll take a photo of that and share it on Facebook. And then my form basically says the same thing as the ad. This is really important. They see the ad, they click next or they click whatever they click, learn more, and then they see this form super important that the form basically says the same thing as the ad. And I just went into a little more detail. He said, attention lawyers, make eye contact on on Zoom. The world has changed and we are now spending our lives communicating with each other on Zoom. The problem is we all end up looking down at our screens and not making eye contact with each other anymore. There is a simple and inexpensive way to fix this so you can make eye contact with your clients and in court when using Zoom. Click next and I'll send you my free cheat sheet. Well, it's not, um, it's not really a cheat sheet. Anyway, they click on next, right? And I just ask them for their name and their email. And then there's a privacy thing that says, yes, I'm going to take your details and email you a hundred times a day until you buy something or take out a restraining order against me. And they agree to the privacy policy. And then on the thank you page, I go, hey, cool, go check this out. And I put a link to the post. I just send them, I know it's ridiculous, I just send them to that post that there is no cheat sheet. I send them to this post. Uh, Here we go. I clicked on the name, the date and the time of that post on Facebook and it gives me the permalink. There it is, right? There's the permalink. So I just send them here. Finally got the iPad set up and the teleprompter so I can look people in the eye on Zoom. Now, this is not a very good experience for someone who opts into my lead ad form because there is no cheat sheet. There's just a post with a bunch of comments and they go, well, thanks, not very helpful, but that's okay. I don't care because I don't want the lawyers right now and I don't have anything to sell them. All I was doing was proving whether or not I could get people to put their hand up and express interest at this point. By the way, if I was doing this for reals, at this point, I would uh, send them to a page 
I would opt into a, I would create a page on my website with that picture, right? And this post on Facebook and I would just put that picture and then I would put, I would write out my cheat sheet. I would just describe how I've done it. Yeah. So that they get some value out of it. Uh, the, all I'm trying to do is prove whether or not they're interested. And I've proven that because if I go back to the ad campaign, we have collected 62 leads at a cost of $4.25 per lead. Okay. Now, why did I just create one ad set to begin with? I created one ad set to begin with to get the ad right. And then all I did was duplicated the ad set four times and changed the audience targeting in each ad set to reflect the country. So literally all I did was went in to the duplicate ad sets and went, don't target the US, target Canada. Uh, 30 to 60, look, no, absolutely no different. I'll show you. I'll just go into the ad set, the, ca the Canadian ad set, right? Here we go, ad set, Canada, edit, and I'll show you, right? The ad set's called Canada, right? Very cryptic, I know. The... Uh, it's a lead, it's optimized for leads, right? I'm spending $10 a day, right? Uh, I set this for a week. I had to set this for a week because the last time I did this experiment, I left it running and I ended up with 400 leads in my thing and I didn't want them and I just wasted a bunch of money. So I set this for a week and then I'm going to turn it off. Here, here, here we go. Look at this awesome audience targeting. Canada, 35 to 60. That's it. That's it. Right. So then I went back and I duplicated the, the ad sets and just renamed them, changed the country, and that was it. And then what I did is I turned all the ad sets off except one and I, sub I published the campaign and that sent it off to Facebook where they have about 8 million people working in a call centre in the Philippines and someone there looked at my ad and went, okay, and approved it. And once it was approved, which, by the way, happened like really quick, within like an hour, never usually happens that quick, but it did, must have got them at a quiet patch. And then I went and just turned all my other ad sets on, knowing full well that they were probably going to be approved because the first one had been approved. I just turned all the other ad sets on, published my changes, and they all went live. And I started getting leads within about two or three hours. Okay? Is this helpful? Anyone? Is this helpful? To anyone let me know in the chat if this is helpful so then what i did is i thought you know what i'm also going to do this for agency mavericks do you want to see that so again i have a separate ad account for agency mavericks i don't know why this was i think this was part of our rebrand i've ended up with a separate ad account for agency mavericks right that I play in. Uh, this is not our main ad account. I just play in this ad account because if I played in our main ad account, Tisu would probably kill me who runs our ads. So I just play in this sandbox, right? Let me make sure the dates are good. So I'll go 7th to today. Here we go. I'll update. Now here, I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'll show you the ad campaign and I'll show you the ad sets and the ads and it might not surprise you that they're very similar. All I'm doing here is I'm verifying an idea that I can get in front of agency owners and talk to them about paid discovery. I have an idea. And the reason I have this idea is twofold. One, we just sold a course called the Paid Discovery Method, which did really well. Second of all, I've been in other Facebook groups where lots of agency owners hang out and paid discovery is a conversation, right? Paid discovery is definitely a conversation. I'm not going to show you the other Facebook groups because I don't want to be that guy, but pick your niche, find where your people are hanging out online, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook groups or circle communities or whatever, and have a look at what the conversations are. What are people asking? And lots of people in my world, lots of freelancers and agency owners are kind of tired giving away lots of free information and then writing proposals and the client disappearing. Or worse, in three months' time, they look at that person's website and go, holy shit, they just stole all my ideas and someone's updated their website and I haven't been paid for my thoughts. There's a big frustration in our industry with that kind of stuff, right? So what I did 
Yes, that's exactly right. Facebook user says, so you suggest lead form ads to test before sending to a landing page. Exactly. Why? Because it's super quick. I don't need to build a landing page. What is the point in building a landing page if I can't get someone to click on an ad? If you can't get someone to click on an ad, the landing page is irrelevant because no one ain't going to go there because they're not clicking on an ad, right? So let's get them to click on an ad first, then let's build the landing page. And if we build the landing page and something breaks, then we know it's probably the landing page because the ad works because we've got them clicking on the ad, right? So... So what I did is I started a campaign, a lead generation campaign on Facebook called PDM Verify, Paid Discovery Method Verify. I just want to verify an idea. I have a, I've had a brain fart, as Oscar would call it, and I just want to know whether or not my brain fart has legs. So I started a campaign called PDM Verify. I created an ad set. Hang on, let me just do this. I created an ad set called... U.S. Because guess what I'm going to do there? I'm going to target people in the U.S. And then in that ad set, I created an ad. And my ad is called Fastest Way to Acquire New Clients. And I went looking through the media in our media library in this particular ad account. And for some reason, this picture was here of me photoshopped onto Tom Cruise's body in Top Gun number one with his thumb up sitting in his F-14 Tomcat cockpit. I thought, that's pretty cool. Our, our designer who used to work with us, Ben, he made that up for me and had it printed on a canvas. And I thought, that's cool. It's topical. Maverick's out at the movies right now. I'm talking about the fastest way to get clients. I put about three seconds worth of thought into this, by the way. I found that ad, that picture in our library and went, that's cool. I'll use that. And it looks a bit silly. So I'll use that. Uh, Ad name, fastest way to acquire new clients. Facebook page, Agency Mavericks is going to be the page promoting this ad. And then uh, what does the ad say? Uh, First of all, the targeting is, guess what, US 30 to 60, all genders. That's it. That's my interest targeting. My copy says, attention web design and digital agencies. If you want to convert new clients at up to 85%, read this. Now, we do have clients converting. We have ag- we have client. just for clarity, our clients are agency owners and freelancers, just like you guys listening to this podcast and watching in the live stream, right? We have clients just like you who are converting new clients at 85% using paid discovery. So I'm not making some bogus claim here. I can prove that. I can back that up. So then there's a bit of copy here, right? Now, the copy I wrote, very similar to the copy on the legal ad. All I'm doing is going, hey, guys, the world has changed. And I love I love that because, you know, I learned this from Oren Claff. What you want to do is you want to basically prove to people that there is a reason they should pay attention. And the one, the, the fastest way to prove to people that they should be paying attention is to tell them that things have changed. Why have things changed? Well, usually if you can give them... Uh, what I call, and again, I learned this from Oren, I call it the set. If you can give them a social reason, an economic reason, and a technological reason why the world has changed, then they can't argue with it. And the pandemic is a pretty big thing, right? So I just say here, attention web design and digital agencies. If you want to convert new clients up to 85%, read this. The world has changed and the post-pandemic business owner doesn't have time to sit through long and boring sales calls disguised as free strategy sessions. They want to get moving and they want results. We've developed a secret method that is helping agency owners get clients to sign on way faster and getting those clients' results way faster. And some of our agency clients are closing at a whopping 85%. Click the button to learn more. And then the little headline says, convert new clients for your agency at 85%, no BS. And then the call to action is learn more. And then what happens is, you guessed it, they go through an instant lead form, right, that I very cryptically called PDM 85% close because I want to know what that form is about, right? We collect their name, 
their email address. Here's the form. Attention web design and digital agencies. Discover the secret to closing new clients at up to 85% without long and boring sales calls disguised as free strategy sessions. No BS. They click on next. They give me their name, email. And also I'm asking for a phone number for these agency clients because I want to call them. Well, I don't. I want my team to call them. Right? Then the privacy policy again, right? Uh, And then woohoo! click the link below to discover the secret to closing new clients for your agency at up to 85%. I've named the button discover now. And guess what? When they go there, when they click that link, I just send them to the sales page for our course, paid discovery method, right? I don't care. At this point, I don't care if they buy paid discovery or not. That's not the point. The point is how much is it going to cost me to get a name, an email, and a phone number for an agency owner? Well, let's go and have a look. Here are the campaign results. 26 leads at a cost of $10.94 for a name, an email, and a phone number, right? They're, that is, they're about the cheapest leads, name, email, phone number, they're about the cheapest leads you can get. I haven't even given these leads to my team yet. I know my team are watching this right now going, Troy, give me the fucking lead so I can call them. I haven't even done that yet because I'm an idiot. We've been a bit busy playing with new lights. So, ladies and gentlemen, once and for all, please, if anybody says to you that they're having trouble generating leads for their business, please send them to a replay of this here podcast episode and tell them you're not having trouble generating leads, you're just not taking enough action, and you are probably sabotaging your own success because you probably don't know what to do with the leads once you get them. By the way, what I'm doing with these leads, I haven't done anything with the agency leads yet. With the legal leads, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. With the legal leads, right, uh, guess what I did? I sent them an email. I know. It's shocking, isn't it? I didn't automate it. I did not log into Zapier. I didn't log into Active Campaign or Go High Level, which is what we're using for all of our automation and stuff these days. I found their email address in the lead center in Facebook. And I, in Facebook, the, if you've got access to the lead center and you're one of the cool kids, uh, then you can actually move them through a different stage of a pipeline. So I did that. I just said that they are now in progress. And I clicked on the email address and it opened my email account and I sent them an email. And the email said, I'm not going to share my screen. Let me see if I can actually remember what the email said. The email said, hi, Diana. Let me see. I'm seeing if I can find out. I can't, doesn't matter. I said, hi, Diana. I, this is literally what I said. I saw you clicked my ad about making eye contact on Zoom. Wanted to make sure it all made sense. Please let me know if you have any questions. P.S. I literally have nothing to sell you right now. I just want to help. Troy. And I have had a couple of responses This was about three days ago when I generated 30-odd leads and I think I've emailed about 12 of them because I'm just lazy and I've been playing with lights and I've had a couple of responses. One from a lawyer here who has an office in Melbourne and Bendigo and whose website is a disaster. That's okay. I'm not going to fix their website because I don't do that anymore but I'll probably refer them on to one of our Mavericks members. So here you go. Here's a client. Go and have a conversation with them. And uh, we're now in conversation. It's cost me 
at that point, it had cost me about $100 to generate the 30-odd leads and to actually start an email conversation with a real human being with a heartbeat who is a perfect audience, perfect client, technically not very savvy, not really sure how to set up, admitted in the email that she wasn't IT proficient, her words, uh, doesn't really know how to set this up, wants to set it up, also said that she wants to be able to help her clients set this up, right? Not tech savvy, but knows she needs to do it, which is why their website's a disaster, right? Super easy, super easy to have a conversation, be super helpful, and then pivot the conversation towards, hey, what other challenges do you have in the business that I might be able to help you with? Do you want to talk about your website? After you've built a bit of trust and you've helped them out, right? What, because here's the thing. Once you help somebody with something, it's amazing how quickly they believe that you can help them with all these other things, even if they're not related. I mean, I'm essentially a business coach and I've had people ask me what they should buy for their 16-year-old niece's birthday. I have no idea why they think I would be helpful in that realm. But so um, once you've helped them with something, it's very easy to then ask them if they need help with any other things like their website or the things that you can actually help them with to get paid for. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go and run around town and set up teleprompters for lawyers. That's not what I would do here at all, right? I would just, if it were me, I've found something that they need help with, I would publish an epic video, which we will probably do because we can and it's fun, showing them how to set this up and I would just give it to them and share it with them and I would track whether or not they'd watched it and if they had, I would call them. Hey, Diane, I saw you watch the video. Do you have any questions? I'm not going to come out to your office and help you do this, but I'm happy to walk you through it over the phone. Why are you being so helpful? Because I want to fix your website. We're starting the conversation by being helpful with something that they actually need help with. And by the way, if, if a lawyer says to you that they would pay $1,000 to have this problem solved and you publish a free piece of content to help them, you can bet that there are other lawyers who also need this problem solved who will come and look at your free piece of content that will position you as someone super helpful for that target audience. I mean, this is, I am a genius. It's true. I am a genius. But it all starts with understanding what your audience actually need help with. And they don't, most of them know they need help with their website, but it's not top of mind unless they're in e-commerce and they're hemorrhaging money. That's a whole other conversation. Right. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I will come back and I will make other videos now that we have more lights. I will make other videos to answer your questions. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please come to the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and come to the Agency Hour on Thursday, 14th of July, 2022, Melbourne time, and watch the replay and ask questions in the comments. Introduce yourself and say, hi, I was listening to this on my AirPods and I'm here to ask some questions. Ask questions and I will make videos to answer those questions, right? So James <clears throat> asks, how would you go about pre-qualifying on price? Does the niche problem dictate base price? Well, if here's, here's what I know, right? I look, for, I look for problems that people are, questions that people are asking and existing products that might exist to solve that problem. And products is usually books, courses, other coaches, consultants. So if, for example, I was in an agency group and I heard lots of agency owners asking about getting better performance out of their remote team. And if I saw enough of that conversation, I would go, hmm, I wonder if anyone's making any serious coin out of selling how to get a good performance out of remote team to not just agency owners, but to any business owner. Right? And then I would go and research and I would try and find someone doing really well selling a course or a book, or a consulting, or a workshop, or a piece of software to help get better performance out of remote teams. Now, I know that, that there definitely is a business there because I could point you to 100 pieces of software that are designed to do that. Slack is one of them. 
multi-billion dollar company bought by Salesforce for an obscene amount of money, all about getting better performance out of remote teams. Asana, ClickUp, uh, Rescue Time. There are hundreds of apps that are all designed and are worth lots and lots of money. They may not be profitable, but that's a whole other conversation. Lots of software companies worth lots of money about getting better performance out of remote teams. So I would instantly go, yes, there is a need here because there are agency owners talking about it and they are saying that this is super important and it's costing them money and they want to fix it. And there are other people who have already proven that there's money in this niche because look at all the examples of people making money out of this exact problem. Yeah. So then what I would do is I would position myself as the guy that helps agency owners, or I would actually in this case position agency mavericks as the brand that helps agency owners get better performance out of their remote teams. Now I have an idea. That's a hypothesis. How would I test that hypothesis? How would I know whether or not I can actually get people to give me their name, email, and phone number for, I don't know, $15, $20 for a name, email, and phone number for an agency owner who's got a remote team and feels like he's not getting the best performance out of them? Let's run a Facebook lead ad and see, right? Before we do anything, before we go build a product, before we do anything, let's verify the, the hypothesis. Yeah? Got it. Uh, Facebook user says, how do you ensure that your audience doesn't get ad fatigue, waste your dollars showing to the same people who ignore them? So this is a whole other conversation. It's a deep dive around Facebook ads training, which I'm not going to do here, but it comes down to frequency. By the way, I would run a Facebook lead ad for a week, right? Unless it went, unless it went viral and I was getting, and my team got on, like if I give these agency contacts to my team and they get on the call and they start booking sales calls and we start closing high ticket clients, I'm going to leave the ad running. In fact, I'll probably leave it running for another week just to see what happens, right? But typically what I'll do is I'll turn the ad off. I'll go, right, tick, that message works. We've got a message. Now, if you really want to do this, right, so so a Facebook user, it comes down to frequency. If you can see in Facebook ads, if you can see that your ad is being shown you know, 12 times a day and it's not getting the responses, turn it off because people are just getting fatigued by it. But typically uh, the advanced version of this is that you run multiple messages. So what you do is in an ad set for the US, for example, you would run three ads in each ad set and what you're doing is you're testing a different message. So for paid discovery, I could say, and this is something we're going to do, I would say this is the fastest way to close new clients at up to 85%. That's an angle that I would test. And I'm testing that now and it's working. I would then also do uh, how to get paid to think and get paid even more to do. And then the copy would say something like, hey, you know how we always like give away our ideas and experience for free on these stupid strategy calls and then someone hires us to actually do the thing and they just want to negotiate on price and screw us into the ground? Well, how'd you like to get paid to think and then get paid even more to implement the thing? That's what paid discovery could do for you. And the other one I would probably, the other angle I'll probably test is, hey, let's stop writing proposals and actually get paid to pitch to clients. That's a genius idea. Same message. The world has changed. Business owners don't want to sit through long, boring strategy sessions, which everyone knows is a sales call. They want results and they want results fast. And we know that people value what they pay for. So how do you get paid to think and then get paid even more to actually do the thing? Ah, we've got a secret method. Check this out. Click the link. Name, email, phone number. Send them off to the paid discovery sales page, right? So you could test multiple ads in each ad set just to see which angle flies. Got it? Right. Hey, I don't know about you, but this is about the most fun I've had with my pants on in recent history. I'm going to do this again. This is lots of fun. And uh, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, I will come back and I will make separate videos to answer your questions. All right? For now, I'm going to go play with some more lights and our stage. Oh, I know. It's amazing. Can't wait to start shooting some content on the stage, which we're going to do today. All right. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please come and join the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Uh, make sure you subscribe and like this and follow us wherever you're following us along, Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, whatever you're doing. And um, by the way, 
Let us know if you'd like us to live stream this show onto YouTube. Eee, I have a theory. I reckon we should do this in the group and on YouTube at the same time. There we go. Just for fun. Why not? Uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week on the Agency Hour. I have no idea what's happening next week on the Agency Hour, but someone will let us know. Keep your eyes on the group for more information there. And if you want to talk to us about solving any of these problems in your agency, lead gen, your sales process, hiring a remote team, uh, fixing your standard operating procedures, building your recurring revenue, building your signature system, firing yourself from your agency altogether and uh, having your agency uh, deliver profit without you actually being on the tools, then email support at agencymavericks.com and have a chat with one of our team and we'll see if we can help you. I'll see you next week on the Agency Hour. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Have a great week. Bye for now.